Footland, there is a huge announcement on today's episode. You do not want to miss. It is just it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how far you and us have come. You got to stick around, check it out. Also, we're going to be talking about all of the really important running backs, the make or break guys where you're going, "Okay, I'm in the murky rounds. Who do I take the risk on? Who do I not who, who do I avoid?" All of that is coming up. Check it out. All right, a bunch of preseason week one games in the books. We're going to talk about them on today's show. Before we do that, I want to remind you about the Ultimate Draft Kit. Now is the time. You got to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit. You got to follow along as the trends in what's going on in fantasy take place. Players moving up, down, injuries. We've got it all in the Ultimate Draft Kit, including projected stats for each and every player for the entire 2019 season profiles on everybody sleepers breakouts bus values and a whole lot more including a mobile app check it all out at ultimatedraftkit.com welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright Ah, welcome in. Oh, we're back. You know what's back. <laughs> Is it football? Mike, say football. No, it's football. Say football. Football. It's football. Oh, yeah. baby. I was watching so much preseason football yesterday, and I was, I'm in the office alone, <laughs> just talking to myself, saying, Man, I love football. <laughs> I'm so excited it's back. Uh, we have a jam-packed show today. I know this one's going to run long. So all of you with an extra long commute, just be uh, extra thankful. Hey, man, it's Friday. Yeah. If you got to take a little bit in on Saturday morning, yeah, it's when you, fine. They might be a little busy Saturday morning. We'll see. Ooh. Yeah, we do have a big announcement. We'll bring Ooh. you in the news section today. We'll comment on all the preseason games. Saturday afternoon. Twitter is a dangerous, wild place in the middle of preseason games as well. No, it's it's the best place to be. Live <laughs> tweeting during preseason football is possibly one of the, of the greatest things of the entire live, year. Live tweeting? Yes. yes. Live reading? Probably not going to help your fantasy team. <laughs> Just <laughs> but chill out. You'll get many status updates about my pants. Yeah, important. And the, they may have and the status of your pants. Uh, Kyler, uh, Kyler Mania Woo! last night. Obviously, we're from Arizona, so we're excited to see him out there. Um, my goodness, what he could hand the ball off. He could run around. With the best of them. No, uh, we'll we'll talk about our biggest takeaways from the players that played last night. A handful of injuries, things like that, and the big announcement in the news. Follow us on Twitter. I mean, everything that's going on, you want to be on there at the FF Ballers. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. And we appreciate each and every one of you supporting the show by subscribing. This is the time to get connected, stay connected. Preseason kicked off last night. There are five week one games remaining. But let's let's look at the slate from last night. Let's start with some high level advice for fantasy players on what you look for in preseason games. Um, I was asked this on a radio show a couple days ago uh what do you look for i was excited about looking at you know the rookies they're, they're getting out there maybe some of these tight ends that you're excited about since we've seen them break out in preseason but what i'm not looking for for me is the stat line i'm not looking for total stat line numbers and how you know these, these, these games do not matter first and second team third team offenses defenses flowing in and out I don't care about the stat line at the end of the day. I care about what my eyes see from certain players on the field and are they proving some of the narratives true about their talent? Yeah, so some of the things that I look for is basically the 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 order of players who's getting in first, who's touching the ball first, who's the first uh, man up. And sometimes that is completely irrelevant. It's important to say that because look, I mean, you know, Marlon Mack, carry on Johnson, they they didn't play for a reason you know you Aaron that's Rogers. also that's also something to look for sure. is certain players who don't play right who's being protected who is yeah. who's the coach saying look I'm not even taking a chance but it will change through the preseason and that's important to know like preseason week one is so much fun 
and is mostly meaningless because the thing that is important to these teams is who are they cutting down to 53? Far more than how does my starting lineup do. So many starters don't play, and the first quarter, you know, like you said, Andy, you're not looking at stat lines because – when did it happen? Did it happen against the twos, against the threes? Well, and the offenses are vanilla. I mean, nobody's showing their best offensive formations or same plans. Same with the defense. Uh, yeah, and same with the defense. Look, the most impressive play from Kyler Murray last night was not the six completions, to me. The most impressive play was him escaping the pocket mm -hmm. like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. That that was some – oh, 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 he's going to do he's gonna do some of that running in, in the NFL. That's the, the thing that I'm paying attention to. Um but at the same time, a lot of fun stuff on the field last night. Yes, absolutely. I think you should start uh, at the at uh, where I want to start, Los Angeles, the Chargers, because there is a running back situation with Melvin Gordon holding out. We have to move on like Melvin Gordon is going to hold out. That's the way I'm looking at it because that's what he's saying is happening, and, then, and the Chargers are dug in. The Chargers are very dug in to the point where – the announcers, the local announcers, were talking about that Melvin Gordon's picture's nowhere. It, the programs, oh. the the lists, the depth charts, Melvin Gordon, you don't, he may not even exist or ever have existed, according to those guys. Mike and I came up with the solution on the footcast yesterday we, that you should just, that Detroit, <laughs> Detroit, just trade carry on for Melvin Gordon. It works for all parties. Get your Marshawn Lynch, Daryl Bevel, and let carry on I go to a good team. I don't think you actually want that. Because Austin Eckler is very good. Yes, that's He's true. a very good player. And Justin Jackson's not far behind. Um, but you did see Eckler got the first team work. Yeah, Eckler is going to be the starter. Uh, but the question is, the ADP gap that is likely to arise, Eckler is going to skyrocket. Justin Jackson certainly will move up. But how are you guys feeling? Like, th There's people drafting right now. Are you taking Austin Eckler? Are you taking that shot in the sixth round? He's seven oh five from where I in it's, half point league, and, and then, but, but you but you're saying you're going gonna to have to spend the sixth yes. round pick. Well, l let's look at the names around him. Do you want do you want Eckler in Gordon Stead or do you want Kenyon Drake, who played last night? Um, you know, along wow. with Blush. Do you want Tevin Coleman? I think I want Coleman I want more Coleman, than I want yeah. Eckler. I would take both of those guys over Eckler. I don't. I, so the answer is no. I think based okay. on the guys around, I'm not personally taking Eckler in the sixth round, especially so, when you can get Jackson late in the draft even even as the weeks go on you're still going to get him very late um mike what about you what are you doing with those guys you looking at jackson late we talked about maybe right uh, it's not going to be late for him either soon well, but it, it will still be later T than Eckler. Round? yeah oh absolutely that would be fantastic i've i think eckler i've talked about it all off season and during our mock drafts i'm always trying to get us to draft him and that's when we thought melvin gordon was playing i think he is an a very skilled player and he's he will be involved in the passing game. You you already saw that yesterday. So I I think he he could be worth that six round pick, even though you may only get four starting games from him. Uh, but we, you, but built into Eckler is standalone value. Should Gordon come back, where that's tougher for Justin Jackson. We are going to talk about Gordon today. This is the running backs uh, ranking show part two. So Gordon lands in the second set because we're trying to mitigate the risk of Melvin Gordon right now. Eckler did fumble. Yes, but that's I don't know. on the goal line. Yeah, and, and, Where then, it and then Justin and Justin Jackson did run into touchdown. Yes, he did after that. So, all right, I think this is one of the top storylines. David Mopportunity himself. Oh, he seized he, his he opportunity. Mopportunistic. Uh, how many more <laughs> can we get in here? Um, Probably a lot. Look, David Montgomery looked like the real deal last night. Yeah, he did. Um, shifty breaking tackles. You know, I'm pretty sure he went up against the second team defense. He, he did. That that's the one thing that was interesting to me. While he like you can't but take that's anything. That's what you should do against absolutely. the second team that's, defense. That's the thing. Like, like there's a couple of guys, uh, Balage and Montgomery, that had great games. Both of which had the entirety of their great performance against the second team. They weren't the first guy up, but you can't knock them for being great against the second team. But you do need to realize, like, so it was really weird. Mike Davis. Mike Davis was out there getting the run with the ones at the beginning of the game, which was really surprising. So it's week one preseason. It's not that surprising to me. I'm not freaking out or even thinking anything about it. Let's see what happens in week three. And again, that comes back to what did the talent show you on the field? Montgomery didn't do anything to assuage or, I mean, stop us from believing 
right. in his talent. Uh, that's probably the uh, the old veteran tip of the cap. I think it is to Mike Davis, Marcus Mariota. Um, I we don't have to talk about it much. Didn't look good. Only completed four passes, but all four passes were completed to Adam Humphreys. Pronounced and, pronounced with an Humphreys. And yeah. every incomplete was also targeted to Adam Humphreys. It was like he had one wide receiver. It was absurd. So I the only takeaway there is Ryan Tannehill looked great. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they make a shift to quarterback if Mariota struggles this year. Well, the problem is Mariota has struggled for his entire career. and uh, Most know, of it, mo yes. Most of it. He's, yeah. he's shown flashes, but he certainly did not look great. You remember when he had that start of the season before the injury where he was yes, he no interceptions in the red zone, hyper-efficient, running the football. You had a window into the potential of that team. Yeah, Pepperidge Farms. But Humphreys, are you are you looking at Humphreys in PPR formats as somebody I'm, more interesting than you were before the game? Yes, I'm interested. I'm paying attention. I'm not interested yet because, it, again, you didn't have uh, Corey Davis out there. You didn't have A.J. Brown. So, you know. All right. The hype train, it's out in force for a couple of undrafted free agent wide receivers, specifically Jacoby Myers, wide receiver for the New England Patriots. Looked great on the field last night, six catches, and then Preston Williams, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. The reason that those names get brought up at all is because both players, it's not just one game and a stat line and the performance on the field. It's also all of the preseason hype around camp. Bill Belichick came out. Jacoby Myers talked him up in camp. Same with Preston Williams in Miami. Both players made, I think, pretty impressive NFL-style catches. All this to say... Dynasty awareness. Is this the time we're looking at Jacoby Myers and Preston Williams? I'm more interested in Preston Williams. I think that there is a path, and the way that the players have been talking about him, he is interested, interesting to me as a deeper dynasty player. Jacoby Myers, I mean, it was a little bit later in the game that he was really doing his damage. Maurice Harris came, was he's the one that I'm paying attention to for redraft. I don't. It's a long climb for Jacoby Myers to get into the actual anywhere of relevance for fantasy to me. Uh, you're, you're probably right, and people should know that Mike's probably right all the time on undrafted free agents. There's only one or two Victor Cruises for all the other guys that flash in the preseason. Yeah, if you bet against all of them, you're going you're you're gonna gonna to win. win more often than not. That being said, the pathway to relevance in New England and the wide receiver core, right now it doesn't go beyond... Uh, Philip Dorsett and, and uh, Edelman and uh, well Edelman sure but on the outside uh, yes. looking at player it, there is a there's a way to work your way into that um, situation not that I believe Myers will but I would pick him up in dynasty leagues I would look at him because of the praise of Belichick sure Do you agree with that Jay did you what was your takeaway from those two guys yeah I, I agree with you Andy Myers is interesting to me when you get the drum beat you're on a great team and then you back it up but Context matters. It was later in the game, so uh, paying attention. Look, if you're if you got a trash dynasty team, like I went, I went to look and say, okay, can I add Myers? Were you saying that you have a trash dynasty team? It no. almost sounded like it. it no, did. I'm I'm saying I went to look and I was like, ah, I don't have anybody to drop. Oh, but if who, you got who has Myers in our dynasty league? What did you is grab? A, is that a self call? Uh, I got him a few days. Okay, so ago. I got you, him a few days. If ago. you had a trash dynasty dynasty team, then you could pick him up. That's what I was saying. So who <laughs> who uh, who got him? I Oh, I did oh. walk right into that. Yeah. The last one I want to talk about is because this is a I'm, I've got to give him a tip of the cap. I was very excited in maybe a little admittedly negative fashion to see Daniel Jones come into the game for the Giants. He was very sharp. He made two two passes in particular, a a slant route to Golden Tate that was right on the money, a perfectly timed pass, and then his touchdown to the corner was a sensational throw. I only bring that up to say if Daniel Jones is actually showing anything to the Giants, it might be him playing into the job instead of just Eli losing the job. If he has a big preseason, the ground swell in New York it will, will be, be huge. Yes. So you're right about that. A couple other quick takeaways for me. Um, Drake and Balazs both got uh, time. Balazs was a little bit better. Uh, Miles and Howard, uh, on yards per carry-wise, you're shaking your head over there. Did, well, you want, did you want to change your opinion on the, the yards per carry? 
No, it was. Uh, I, I saw you put that note in here. I guess we just saw it differently. The first quarter, Drake had uh, the the whole first series. Blage had the second series. That was all ones v ones. And in the second series, Blage had basically every play ran into the backfield, tackled, then got the ball thrown to him where he didn't pay attention and went to his back. And then it was a three and out. Whereas Drake did make some good plays with that first team and was the first guy up. But Balaj did continue to have a good game after that. Okay. Miles Sanders, uh, Jordan Howard split first team work. Both didn't do much, but neat to see Miles earn his way onto the field with the ones early. Uh, right now, Miles Sanders is one of the best values in all of fantasy football. Uh, whether it lasts, I don't know. But you need to get a hold of him if you're drafting any time in the near future. He's a value. Lamar Jackson, very solid in his debut. Josh Allen's still inaccurate. I hate, I hate, <laughs> hate jo Josh Allen does what Cam Newton does, which is look ridiculously bad on some throws and look ridiculously good on some throws. But you're that's, right. That's fair. He but... looked like trash and then, oh, there's the arm. Oh, wait. Yeah. Where you know it's just it was so funny listening to the he's commentators. Still Josh Allen. Yes, yes the commentators. That, that was that was the news. That's note. the news. Yeah. Like two different times they're they're saying you know he's working on that intermediate that short game. They've got Cole Beasley. He needs to stop throwing the ball far all the time. And every single time they said that snap, look, look at me th launch it. It was so funny. It was like on cue. Like he had them piped in. Uh, I would throw Darnold out there. Uh, oh yeah, he looked great. Darnold looked after that first pass that should have been an an interception. The rest of the drive, I thought he looked great. So speaking to what you said yesterday, Andy, the belief that the Jets could level up here and Darnold could be better than we think, I, I, you know, pay attention to him as preseason goes on. I'm sure there are other storylines with your favorite team we haven't covered, but uh, look, the Browns look great. Oh, man, Baker. Uh, Baker was getting his Phil Collins look, on before the game. If you have a heart condition, do not watch the Browns opening drive. Because you will be deceased. Chubb <laughs> looked great, too. All right. Um, I think we'll pause it there. We've got the running backs to get into and some other news. We'll talk about some injuries here. Let's do it. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right. Speaking of Sleeper, guys, we have some very, very, very big news. <laughs> Huge. This was not – we didn't know this was going to happen. We're just going about our, our just average day, which right now isn't very average with all that's going on in fantasy. But we were invited to a very, very, very special league on Sleeper by none other than Juju Smith-Schuster. Oh, Jason, a can star you, was born. In your heart yesterday, could you contain yourself at the thought of – I assume you will just draft Juju and trade him to Juju. Mm -hmm. I will. I, I will draft him one and trade him to Juju for nothing. Uh, in his honor, I I got you, Juju. What? Just like to bestow him? Yes. Well, he deserves here you himself. are yourself. Now that being said, we are co-owning a team in this mm. league that also has Ninja oh. in the league. Zach Efron's in the league. Carl Anthony Towns is in the league. This is going to be a high-profile chance. Tim the Tap Man's there. What I up, just, Tim? I just want to smoke these people in trades. That's <laughs> all I want to do is I want to um, – Jason, if you grab carry-on, I may force you to trade him to, nin oh, to Ninja. Oh, yeah, for sure. I have to. Get that value. But here's what's so cool about this. We've been invited. We're in this league, and we are drafting tomorrow live – 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be streaming it live on YouTube – so if you want some extra Saturday content, obviously we're five days a week now. Um, you had Saturday shows in July. You get one tomorrow. YouTube.com slash fantasy footballers. Or is it – I apologize. Is it the fantasy footballers? It is the fantasy yeah. footballers. Um, I would myself. recommend you follow us as well, Mike. Uh, I'm already subscribed, man. I don't have to remember. So you've heard us talk all off season about Sleeper. Um, that's where our, our listener league, which, our, by the way, stop it. Stop sending in so many incredible <laughs> – I am, I'm feeling physical pain with the amount of incredible entries to the Listener That's League. It's tough, man. Because we have to choose now. It's really tough, but we're doing that on Sleeper. Yes. This uh, Celebrity League is on Sleeper. Their platform is awesome. It's the place to be playing your leagues. And That's you're about to we're draft, them so to. just move, move now. Do it now. Do that, and then watch us draft against these uh, 
chumps. And every, everything's on the line, guys. It's time. This yeah. is not a mock. Tomorrow's not a mock draft show. Correct. Tomorrow's a draft draft show where we smoke juju. It's going to be awesome. You'll see basically everything you I'll see. I'll also from, race him. You'll see. Well, that will be a loss. I'm feeling a little bit. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm a little bit too excited. It's, it's going to be like a uh, hundred thousand. Then we're going to arm wrestle. A hundred thousand to one odds. If I start from Juju the wins, I'm still putting money on Juju. Juju, if I if I start from the fifty and he starts from the 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 end zone. Is it a 40-yard dash? No, it's a, the full field. Oh. If I start from midfield and he starts at his own end zone, does he beat me? Yes. He, th- yes. He probably does. 100%. It's a challenge. A formal challenge has been made. Uh, so, I don't know. So I, tune at, in. at the 50, I think you could. YouTube.com you slash the fantasy footballers tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, see how we do. Move your league to sleeper. You'll you'll you won't regret it. All right. Uh, some injury update news. Sad news for Jermaine Curse last night. Yeah. Um, he's done for the year. There was a lot of uh, you talk about a the drum beat. I mean, he was having a great camp in Detroit. He's going to be done. Uh, David Chow, San Diego Union Tribune's David Chow, one of the best injury experts out there. Doctor David Chow. Yes. To you. Yes. Uh, Antonio Brown news. Look, he he believes Antonio Brown will be fine and and ready to go for the season. He may not get a lot of time in camp, but believes he'll be ready for the season. Uh, so take that for what you will. We don't know the future, but right, he's not as worried as others are. Yeah, and it, it does mean he could get off to a slower start. Being ready for the season doesn't mean you get preseason. You don't get as much camp with the new offense. I've heard changing car. teams, that's, that's not the best way to start. Right. It's true, and then you counter that with the hardest working best wide receiver in the history of the last 10 years, so... Um, I like the pivot there. Yep. You thought I was going to say the game? <laughs> the history of the last two Yeah, years. I wasn't going to go beyond that because it's not true. Uh, Jarek McKinnon. The... Jarek McKinnon I... will receive a platelet-rich injection. His knee soreness continues. He will be sidelined a minimum of another two weeks. If you listen to Mike Shannon and talk about it, he equivocates on any timeline. It's kind of like, we're just going to be patient with Jarek. If... if the range of outcomes here is he could end up on IR if he doesn't recover the way they want him to recover. They already took him off a of pup. They can't put him back on pup. So this is not good for Jarek McKinnon. And no. this is technically the second setback now for him. They were they were expecting to not have him on pup. Had to put him on pup because he was having an issue. Gave that time. He comes back. It swells up. I think this is. You know, I'm I'm not anywhere. If I'm drafting now, Jarek McKinnon is off the board. I'm not getting him for value, but Tevin Coleman and Matt Burita Tevin in Coleman that order. Went up. Yeah, I think they're – look, if there was clarity to the San Francisco backfield, I think we'd all be all about it, right? So there's this starting is a, to be a little bit more clarity. I have nothing against Jarek McKinnon when I tweeted it a few days right. ago about it. It's, it has nothing to – I love the guy. I wanted him to succeed last year. He's a great he, friend of the show. He's, he, been he's been on the show. Things change in the NFL. It, that's just a pure factual thing. If, if you have an injury, you're going to be adjusted on your range of outcomes, and I don't know if he's going to be back on the field. Tevin Coleman's looking like a real steal. I spent so much yes. time talking about Matt Burita because of the value. of He's the last pick in every draft. But don't ignore Tevin Coleman because that offense is going to run the football. Kyle Shanahan dominates when it comes to run, what he does with the running game, even last year. I mean, last year they didn't score a bunch, but oh my goodness, were they yeah. a great running team. And there, we did have an update on Kiki QT, who he went down. Yeah. It, it looked like a one of those horrific preseason situations, but at least according to Ian Rappaport, he's saying it's not a major ankle injury, but I would, I would expect Kiki will be shut down for the preseason. Hopefully he's back week one. It, it's, really, it's really rough mentally when, in, when a player who has an injury-prone label – immediately right. goes out and yeah. gets injured again. You you just kind of go, okay, maybe maybe this injury wasn't as serious as it looked at first, but I don't know, man. It's it's hard for me to put my confidence in my draft pick in that. Um, Yeah, I, when he went down, people were, oh, not again. You know, and it, yep. it affects – um, probably affects Duke Johnson. If, Q, if QT misses time, it also affects Deshaun Watson's output a little bit. I agree. Um, But that's today's news and notes. Oh, my gosh, we got running back rankings, guys. I'm very excited. Before we get into that, I want to thank today's sponsor. You know who I'm talking about, Manscaped, because they're number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. 
the look, they have redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin safe technology. This trimmer will not nick or snag. I have taken a ride on the lawnmower. <laughs> I've said it's smooth. They are not joking when they are saying that there is some kind of fancy skin safe technology in there. Things are protected like they've never been protected before. Accidents are a thing of the past. Like you don't want to use the same trimmer that's trimming the beard and the uh, the sensitive areas. They got a bunch of other awesome things to keep you protected down there as well. You deodorant your armpits. Why not the smelliest part of your body? Always use the right tools for the job. Get twenty percent off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code Footballers at Manscaped. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. And we want to thank Roman with their FDA-approved solutions designed to stop hair loss. A lot of people don't know that there are FDA-approved solutions for that. And two-thirds of guys, look, you're experiencing noticeable hair loss by age 35. I've been there. Uh, <laughs> look, Roman makes it convenient, okay, to get FDA-approved hair loss treatment from your phone or computer. You go to GetRoman.com slash footballers. You start your free online visit and chat with a licensed doctor from the comfort of your home. If your doctor decides the treatment's right for you, then they their dedicated pharmacy can ship treatment to you with free two-day shipping. If you want to stop or prevent hair loss, starting treatment early is key. And with Roman, you can find the best approach to help you keep and maybe even regrow the hair on your head. Roman is giving away a free online visit and free two-day shipping when you go to GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. Running backs. All right, one through ten. Running back rankings on yesterday's podcast. So if you want to hear us comment on some of those uh, guys at the top, make sure you listen to yesterday's show. We're looking at our consensus half point per reception rankings. And these these are fluid. I mean, these things, uh, we're tweaking and modifying stat lines for the 2019 year. I'm doing it right now. Every day. Yeah, what, what are you doing over there? What are you doing? Who, who always you, always who are you pumping up. Okay. Always modifying rankings. Um, let's start at eleven because that makes sense, right? It comes after the one through ten. Nick Chubb. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you kind of sound like I was arbitrarily picking a number. Let's start at the. No, it's this the next in order. Uh, um, Nick Chubb comes in at number eleven. I've got him up at eight. Jason at thirteen. Mike at eleven. Uh, he burst onto the scene last year in the wake of the departure of Carlos Hyde. Well, he forced a trade. Pretty he, much. The dude was such a beast that they said, we got to get Carlos Hyde out of here. We got to dump this contract. And they somehow were able to do it. They unleashed Nick Chubb. He's a fantastic running back. The only knock coming into draft season on Nick Chubb was the amount of pass-catching volume he's going to get because he's going to be the banger, and he's great at it for a very high-powered offense, and so he'll have a ton of touchdown opportunity. But the, what separates him why he's a little bit back is the pass-catching opportunity. That saw at least a a, a reasonable bump up when the, when the Browns traded away Duke Johnson. I, I do expect Dontrell Hilliard to be more of a replacement for Duke Johnson, in, at least until – uh, Kareem Hunt comes back. Like I'm not projecting all the targets are now going to Nick Chubb, but he did move up. I mean, I gave him, I gave him 15, uh, 15 more targets, and and that was enough to move him up into the, uh, into a solid RB one for me. Yeah, I, honestly, I've got him at 13 right now uh, on the season long rankings. I don't feel good about having him that low. He looked uh, fantastic in his first preseason game last night as he did his whole rookie year. Coming out of college, he was an absolute beast. You worried about the injury that he was recovering from, which was horrific. He's back. And like you said, Mike, high-powered offense. He's a goal line guy. And now if he's involved in the passing game, there's very little to be worried about. And I'm not worried about, despite the fact that Kareem Hunt does eat in on my season-long rankings statistically, if I'm in a draft, I'm not worried at all about Kareem Hunt. And we did talk uh, about a lot of this and s some of the other nuances on yesterday's show after the Duke Johnson trade. 
Yeah, I'll fold Duke Johnson to Houston commentary on yesterday's pod. Joe Mixon comes in at number 12 on our consensus running back rankings. You know, let me let me frame my view on Joe Mixon right now because he's at 13, and that's he's dropped down a little bit over this offseason. There hasn't been really – I don't have any really good reason to dislike Joe Mixon other than kind of the – Well, the offensive line is – The offensive line has been beat up. Yes. A.J. Green's injury, concern about the division. It's just kind of – I, I mentioned this when we we're talking about carry on. There's only a couple of guys on sub 500 teams that end up in the top 10 at the running back position. So you assume one of them is going to be Saquon Barkley. Is it carry on? Is it Mixon? And obviously they can outperform the expectation in Cincinnati. That's not outside the realm of possibility in the NFL, but I just kind of like my top end ceiling for Joe Mixon is starting to move down a little bit from where I was at the end of last year. I do think Gio Bernard will probably be more of an annoyance than people expect him to be. I'm glad you brought him up. Okay. So, because you agree? Well, yes. Uh, Gio Bernard is a is a good player, especially in the passing game. Joe Mixon has a three-down skill set. I'm not going to take away from that, but it you have a new regime. You don't have you we can't rely on, well, Marvin Lewis went with Joe Mixon as a as a bell cow running back this last year. You can't just automatically transfer that on to the new regime. I think we all have Mixon ranked, you know, I mean, right. He's a one right here. Yes. He's, a, he's an RB. So we're, we're, we're not trying to take everything away from him, but of, of the running back ones, he's the one that I have the most skepticism on. Having said that, I did have a lot of skepticism on him last year, and he came through in a big way. And Joe Mixon was a dominant player for, for fantasy football. But with with the offense taking a massive hit, with with injuries and uh, and retirements happening to the offensive line, I'm I'm concerned about Joe Mixon and and there's a a steady drum beat going from the beat reporters talking about specifically about Giovanni Bernard looking great this offseason. Yeah, there were there were rumors uh, about Gio, Giovanni Bernard uh, looking to be traded. Maybe that was happening. And as the beat reporters investigated that, they were surprised to learn that. Not only is that not true, but they're working on an extension. Uh, and, I had not heard that right. part. So, I mean, he feels know, feels like the opposite of a trade. It <laughs> feels a lot like the opposite, which was a little bit crazy <laughs> considering they drafted two running backs. But they've got four pretty darn good running backs there. Obviously, Joe Mixon is is talented. He's going to be uh, the primary back, and you can make the arguments that Zach Taylor's coming over from Los Angeles, where maybe he's going to instill. And, and use Mixon uh, the way that they use Gurley, there are narratives to be better. But in reality, this is going to be a bad team with a much worse offensive line than they had last year, and it wasn't the best. And they're missing their best offensive player in A.J. Green. So if I have to say who's going to bust, I kind of echo what you guys think. It, it, it's a worrisome situation, even though I think he's one of the most talented all-rounded backs. All-rounded? Well-rounded. <laughs> <laughs> Tolbert was more of the Tolbert, all-rounded. Tolbert, C.J. Anderson. Oh. Um, that's not nice. All right. Mixon did miss a couple of weeks with injury last year. And, uh, you know, I think he's very safe for a double-digit kind of guy. I think he's in that bell cow safe category. I just, when your offense doesn't give you scoring opportunities, which is something that he could struggle with, that's another one of those red flags. I'm going to go as far, though. Look, the season's about to get started. Nobody has a win-loss record yet, Jason. So to the Bengals fans out there, I am going with could be a bad team. Jason took the more definitive will be. I'm going to go with the could be because we don't know. Nope. There's hope everywhere, Jason. That is, There's hope everywhere right now. Do you have hope that the Miami Dolphins could be a good team? Yes, I do. I've actually said it on this show okay. that the Miami Dolphins – look, there have been many years ago. I, I like this new side of Vandy. This is a positive man. This is good. Bringing positivity. A couple of years ago, people were dogging on the Dolphins being the worst team in football. Brooks is uh, not yeah. his head. That was, that was you. <laughs> sure. It was. Maybe I'm learning. He's learning. That's good. <laughs> right? Team, teams surprise us every year. Every That's single true. year, teams that you think are bad end up – I love it. I think people thought the Dolphins were a bad team last year. And they were a seven and nine team. Uh, okay. You know what? Right? You know what? Thinking through it, oh, great. looking at everything, this is not yeah, a good setup. Here. The Bengals could be good. Thank you. I mean, I remember. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it here comes the. But they won't. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I remember uh, not believing in uh, a couple years ago. 
the the super young 32 year old Sean McVay it was questionable the yes. Rams were a bad team under Jeff Fisher and it didn't look good and he turned him around in a heartbeat I'm not saying that that is probable but certainly is in check, the range check of this outcome. out check this out the Giants could be a good team hmm. well let's hmm. take it easy over there man <laughs> take not it easy get out of All control right, but back to Joe Mixon uh, on on fantasy football calculator in half point going 203 are you comfortable going like Devontae Adams or Julio Jones? Then the turn comes back and Joe Mixon. He's he he's is your one, one at that point. No, I I don't want. Or, to, I don't really want to do that. Or if Mixon's on your team, are you going trying to hit the strategy that he's your RB two and you're going heavy in the first two? That one. That one. Okay. Or if I go the other strategy and take two wide receivers and uh, Dalvin Cook is there, I would take him over over Mix. Carry on. My all right, you might not have heard of him. Carry on Johnson, running back for the Detroit Lions. Uh, you can listen to any show we've done in the last six months if you'd like the rundown on Carry On. You can also go back to Monday's My Guys show where Jason lays out yet another case for um, loving Carry On with all your heart, has all a, your has, mind. Has a player with 10 games under his belt gotten the, the groundswell that Carry On Johnson has? There's an insert Jason monologue mark in our show doc today. Yeah, every time his name is listed in the doc, we just we know we insert, have to wait. Jason, what? Um, I heard on the footcast yesterday. Now I had to get. I, I wasn't on the footcast. Um, I, I had the privilege of going to a dental office instead. Mm -hmm. um, you win. Did uh, <laughs> I heard you? You you talked briefly about the worry. Well, just that. Look, if if carry on isn't carry oh, on, if carry on isn't what I have said and have built up. Look, I will mount with you, Foot Clan. My, I, I will, I will, I will a puddle be a puddle of misery, of tears. I will cry myself into a puddle. Um, and and the reality is is this: I see both sides of it, right? If the Daryl Bevel RB one, I don't believe you. I really do. No, <laughs> okay, this is okay. why. This is why I, I have worries. This is why when people keep sending the questions of, do I keep carry on in the third or some other player at great value in the twelfth? It's you know, it's the other player. It, just because I love carry on doesn't mean I can't see the range of outcomes. If Daryl Bevel's all RB one comes through, or if Theo Riddick's last four years pass catching comes through, and the volume is there for a talented carry on, I'm confident I'm going to be right. But if that doesn't happen, then he's a running back on a bad offensive team. Project, you know, could be bad offensive team, and so he could disappoint. I believe in the talent. I believe that he showed it on the field, and I'm hoping and I see paths for his opportunity. But if you really want to hear me talk him up, go listen to Monday's episode because I'm a believer. My flag is planted, but I've I've never I've never constructed as large a monument. And so I'm, uh, I'm terrified of the foundation. If the wind blows, if the Please storms Please tell me come. I built it uh, right. Taking <laughs> those things down. I mean, that's, that's a lot of work. Let me put this into draft context. Damian Williams has been seeing the dip, right? So right now his ADP is 210. Meanwhile, Kerryon Johnson has jumped on the back of an eagle and is just soaring thank across you for, the thank land. Thank you for calling me an eagle. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's jumped on the back of a bald eagle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes! Oh, and America! It, oh, get that Roman coupon code again. <laughs> it is at two twelve. Yeah, his ADP is in the second round. So, with those two streams crossing, are Andy? Are you going to take Damian Williams there, or would you rather pay up? You know for, that for carry on. That's a good question. Because I thought you were just Thank gonna, you. I thought you were just going to say is two twelve too high, but no. you made me choose between two players. They're at a crossroad. They've gone bone thugs and harmony. They are at a crossroads. I'm sticking with the offense right now. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with the offense, but it, it's getting tighter. Do, what did you make of Andy Reid's comments uh, as reported yesterday about more of a committee backfield for Damian Williams? You've already made the point that right. Williams is going to be this pass catching guy for Mahomes no matter what, which is worth its weight in gold. Did you make anything of that comment? Did it concern you? Uh, when I first read, when I read through it, it was ooh, this is, this is rough. But then I spent more time thinking about it, actually hearing the the context. And I mean, he he was saying I used a bit of a committee in Philadelphia. Can I read the quote? So because yeah, yeah, we're, go ahead, we're talking please. about it, and people might not have heard it. 
Yesterday on a Sirius XM radio interview, he said, Andy Reid said, I did a little bit of that, speaking to a running back by committee. While I was in Philadelphia, kind of a running back by committee deal, and we had some success with it. We'll do that here in Kansas City. And he went on to name uh, the other backs. Sort of name them. No, I mean he We drafted named... a kid at running back, and the other Williams isn't bad that, either. That's what I mean by sort of. And then um, Carlos. Remember, so – the other, the kid that he's talking about is Darwin Thompson. Is Darwin Thompson? Look, and, then, and and if Andy Reid thinks that, or if, if if in his example, this is the committee approach he did in Philadelphia, where he almost always produces a running back one. Give me that committee. I I do agree with with Andy as the carry on truther and as someone who's cooling on Damian Williams because I don't believe in the talent. Look, this is the perfect talent versus opportunity situation. I'm taking opportunity over talent at the running back position. I would take Damian Williams there too, but I don't think 212 is too high for carry on in a vacuum. He could be a good pick there if the other guys that, you know, if if Damian Williams is gone and you're at 212, I don't think that's too high personally. Yeah, uh, despite what it may appear like on the podcast, uh, Jason and I do have, you know, some very controlled discussions about carry on from time to time. And we were talking, you know, on Slack the other day, and I said, one, I hope he's great because I know people love you, Jason, and I know they believe in you. And number two, I just hope he gets the opportunity around the goal line. The Garrett Blunt had 17 goal line carries, uh, 17 within the 10. Carryon had two last year. If he gets the opportunity inside the red zone, that's, I mean, we already saw Joe Mixon do that last year. Joe Mixon on a team that wasn't that good had nine touchdowns. Carryon with nine touchdowns, He's going to beat where I have him ranked 100% and validate everything you believe about him. Um, and you'll be, you'll complete as a human being. I agree. He is great. Devonta Freeman at 14, Josh Jacobs at 15. I will tell you this. My confidence in Devonta Freeman has grown a little bit uh, from, it, from a couple weeks ago. It should have. And part of that had to do with listening to head coach um, Dan Quinn talk about his running back room because if you want to say Andy Reid doesn't know the name of his players, um, Dan Quinn, is he knows the name of them, but he doesn't know which one's the two. Is it Edo Smith? Is it Brian Hill? Different players are going to have opportunities, and he talks about free – he knows Freeman's at the top of the mountain, and then it's kind of like 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. So Freeman will have the opportunity to get the workload that we've seen in the past. Will he be hurt? I don't know. This was a player who was number one in 2015, number six in 2016. Injuries have been a huge problem. Love the offense. You talk about believing in an offense. Freeman will have every opportunity. I'm I'm rising a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I rising. Do you remember when Devonta Freeman, his rookie year was terrible? I yes. mean, he was he was really, really, really bad. And then he yes. truly leveled up. Mike really remembers. Sure. And then he really leveled up. So Ito Smith last year was really bad as a rookie. And you go, okay, can he do that Devonta Freeman jump? And according to one preseason uh, first quarter that we shouldn't overreact to, the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, nowhere. And the way that his coach has been Ito talking Smith, about him. I mean, I'm just, Ito Smith is not a worry to me to Devonta Freeman. And if I would Devonta, not handcuff Freeman with Ito. No. Anymore. I wouldn't Agreed. handcuff him with anybody because you don't know who it's going to be. But. My point is, if the other guys behind Freeman, if no one can step up and actually be a relevant quality player, then then the only worry with Freeman is injury and injury alone. I think he's going to have the role. He's going to have the goal line work. He's going to have the pass catching work. He's on a good offense. It's just, will he be injured? And, and I know, you know our own Matthew Betts, uh, who does a lot of injury analysis, does have worries, does not expect him to be able to go the full 16 without a, a re-aggravation so there is risk there but so you talked about Josh Jacobs we've got him you know back to back who are you drafting out of those two if you're on the clock and let's say you've got one running back already and this is your RB2 yeah I, I have Jacobs ranked higher than Devonta Freeman I do and I realize that is this you know we haven't seen Jacobs on the field before and there are red flags with his production in college the number of carries that he's received over you know, in his senior yeah, not, season. Not his production, but his opportunity where he we, we haven't seen a full workload from Josh Jacobs, which he will be asked to do this year. It seems that way, but we I hope. but I do sure. um I do have Jacobs ranked slightly higher than Freeman. It's just preferential. It's probably a little bit of the 
fantasy football bias that comes with the unknown. We've seen Devonta Freeman at his peak. We've seen him slide down the mountain. I've never seen Josh Jacobs at his peak. And if it's back-to-back, I'm looking for the upside of Josh Jacobs there where I'm not sure that the upside for Freeman exists anymore. But but it's a you know it's close to me. If if you're specifically talking about those two guys, <clears throat> it's it, there's talent and opportunity for both of them, right? Like they're so you can't tie break with that. So I'm tie breaking with the offense, and I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons over the Raiders. For perspective on rookie running backs from 2012 to 2018, 11 running backs were drafted in the first round, and that's what Josh Jacobs was. Of those 11, seven finished their rookie season as a top 10 fantasy back. That's part of what I'm banking on with Jacobs is the draft capital matters so much at the running back yes, it position. Does. And seven of, of those 11 guys have ended up in that top 10. We're in a PPR world, guys. We're living in a world where that pass catching back matters. Jacobs can do that. Um, as Ken Freeman. As Ken Freeman, absolutely. And that was, that's was that been the dip lately. for or At least in 2017, it was the targets. Dirk Cutter, who is back now, uh, to be the OC for Atlanta, I mean Freeman. Uh, Freeman was getting targets. Yeah, part of it, Matt, Matt Ryan is willing to drive the ball downfield a little bit more than Derek Carr's shown he's been willing to do. Derek Carr is in love with the line of scrimmage. Oh yeah. So I mean, he has a picture on the wall. He's never never met a short pass he could say <laughs> no to. <laughs> so we'll get to follow Josh Jacobs uh, in hard knocks as well. Uh, I do think there's a world where he could finish in the top ten, but that. Certainly. That means that you know he's going to need to get the workload appropriate for an RB1 situation. I, I look at it a little bit like when Christian McCaffrey came into the NFL where people knew the passing game work was going to be there but wasn't sure about how much rushing work McCaffrey would get in year one. So you're going to see the passing game involvement yeah. almost guaranteed for Josh Jacobs. I hope he gets all the running work that I expect. Hey, uh, That's hard. funny because I think the way I look at it is – I the the rushing work will be there for Josh Jacobs. Well, that's combined number one overall. <laughs> Just say like Richard is still still around, and he was Derek Carr's best friend in the sh in the short passing game. Not projecting that, but just saying I know the the, the early down work will be there for Jacobs. I, I really want to see him on Hard Knocks. So HBO, if you could uh, go ahead and show him this week. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, I saw him. He was on. He was on last week. He, he was, wasn't highlighted. He was sitting in the back of that big meeting room. I yeah. saw him in there. Mm. He Impressive. was paying attention. Um, yeah, that reminds me of Hard Knocks with the Falcons and uh, Devonta Freeman's first year and how much people rooted for him to have success, except for Mike. Uh, Aaron Jones and Leonard Fournette at 16 and 17 in the rankings. Oh, gosh, I'm really <laughs> – Two guys I don't know what to do with. Yeah, these And are that's <laughs> the category we're in, right? You, these are the tough ones. Yesterday, yeah. Saquon's a good player. Um, Aaron Jones is at 14 in my ranking, 17 and 17 in Jason and Mike's right now being drafted as the RB 15, his current average draft position is the middle of the third round last year. We saw everything we wanted to see from Aaron Jones in spurts. I guess the last thing we would have wanted to see was him on the field more consistently. Yes. Yeah, so it, it, it was a, uh, it was a tough ride for Aaron Jones to get a featured role he started off the year with the suspension. Then he was in the doghouse for McCarthy. <laughs> McCarthy insisted that Jamal Williams play in front of Aaron Jones. Eventually, sanity prevailed, and Jones became the, the number one in the depth chart. Was absolutely sensational for, for a stretch of weeks before going down to injury. Speaking of injury, he is not practicing with a hamstring injury. So I want to get your guys' temperature. We don't like soft tissue injuries in training camp, especially prolonged ones. And Aaron Jones, so far, it has been a prolonged absence from, from practice. Jason, yeah. how do you uh, – the, the are you Mr. Risk Adverse? Sure. And, no. we, and if you've been listening to the show, you know that Jason loves Aaron Jones. He was in consideration for – a oh, my guy, correct? That is 100% correct. So and, that's how much you love him. And, and if, if I'm being completely honest, the biggest reason that I decided to not make him a my guy, you know, I, I had a lot of guys I liked, so it wasn't like I disliked Aaron Jones. It's just other people won on the tiebreaker was this hamstring issue. <clears throat> I don't want this season 
I want to remember from last year to not buy the injury dip. I believe that Aaron Jones was going to get a lot more expensive when he's getting hype in camp and getting that preseason work. And lo and behold, he hasn't been able to because of the hamstring issue. And so he's staying low in drafts. He's staying where – look, talent-wise, we on the footcast yesterday, we were asked – Unbelievable. What he's, a, he's a great sec- talent. What second running back, what running back 13 through 24 could actually finish the season as the number one running back? This was my answer, Aaron it's Jones. not outside – if you replace him, if Alvin Kamara and Aaron Jones sp- s- switch spots – Yeah. Where Aaron, are you projecting Aaron, Aaron Jones? Aaron Jones would be one of those, those top four got to have players. I mean, look, from weeks eight through 14 last year, when he actually did get the work, he was the running back five just behind Alvin Kamara, and that was on the Green Bay Packers that didn't run the ball much. They literally ran the ball the fewest in their franchise history, and and uh, the you know they ran the ball the least in the NFL. So um, I worry about the lingering concern – and I don't want to draft a guy the who lingering is, hamstring you're yes, who okay. is currently injured, but the talent is there. If you're a risky player, if you're a swing for the fence Huge to for the moon, Aaron Jones is your pick because if he gets the work, he's going to be great. We've never seen him on the field be inefficient. He's on a what projects to be a good offense. So it you know Yeah, the questions posed, do you believe LaFleur will involve Aaron Jones more in the passing game? They, my true answer to that is I I don't believe that he – I would probably lean more on I don't know slash no, I don't believe that. So I, I don't believe that necessarily. Aaron Jones had 35 targets last year. I lean on the yes side. Because more? Of, over under 35. Targets? More. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if that's saying enough. You know what I mean? And that was in – you know, he didn't play a full season. So 35 on a, on a full 16-game season sounds small. But early in OTAs, before the hamstring issue, a lot of people. Oh, I apologize. I, yeah, yeah, no, I was right. Twenty six receptions. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of beat reporters were were talking not about what the coach said, wanting to get him involved. They were talking about how involved he was in their practices, in the uh, getting a screen or getting a wheel route or going downfield and catch a pass. So I I do believe that he is more involved in the passing game. I love I love what you brought up now on the footcast. It, he is one of the players that could be. It, he's in the realm of possibilities to be number one. If you're on a great offense and you get the work and you do what he does efficiency-wise, just look at what Alvin Kamara can do with the football in his hands. Just give him the football. Mm-hmm. You listening? <laughs> and to be – Deion Lewis last year, he he was targeted pretty heavily. He got the work. He just didn't do much with it. I think right. Aaron as well. And Jamal Williams, the counterpart, the, the, the two of the one-two punch, also has a hamstring injury right now. So – Leonard, Leonard Fournette, he was the one of the players drafted very highly last year that destroyed your team, your soul, your soul. Week one, seven points, didn't play for two weeks. Week four, four points, didn't play for five weeks. Missed a game for fun in week thirteen. So he had a couple. I mean, he had three straight monstrous weeks from weeks ten through twelve. Leonard Fournette, and then he winked at you and went away. <laughs> Leonard Fournette is so difficult. Because if he's if he is on the field, he will put up he he will put up numbers even if he doesn't really want to. And I know we had some bad games last year from him, but he will get such a massive volume. And he his last year he was actually started to be involved in the passing game as well. He is the featured back for this team, unless somehow they're going to go to Alfred Blue uh, a little bit more than we expect, which would, would be very bizarre. He's but up. you can't guarantee that Leonard Fournette is going to be on the field. He's had a, a numerous injuries. He's had numerous off-field incidents with his own coaching staff to the point of they were able to strike his guaranteed money out of his contract because they were so upset with, with, uh, with his actions off of the field. It's... He's not guaranteed to be the guy. Let's turn to some numbers here. Rushing attempts per game since the start of 2017. Zeke is number one. Lev Bell is number two. You know who number three is? I'm going to guess Leonard Fournette. No, Herschel Walker. Oh, No, dang. it's Leonard Fournette. Yes. 19.1 rushing attempts per game. Yes, volume. Volume. So there are those kind of the clouds all around Leonard Fournette, but you're not – I mean, you're – paying less for him now 
because of those clouds being drafted healthy. as the RB16. I know he's got they, the in- I'm not threatened by anybody in that backfield. He's got the injury prone label and, and and you know, you could say deservedly so for from his history. But, you know, you look at Aaron Jones and Leonard Fournette, one of them is injured right now, one of them is healthy. They both have a tremendous upside. I mean, in the last 2 years, when you talk about running backs consistency, Leonard Fournette's one of the most consistent performers in fantasy, the only guys who have finished uh, ahead of him as far as an RB2 or better on a weekly basis is Kamara, Gordon, Elliott, Gurley, Bell, and Barkley. That's it. So it's just a matter of will he stay on the field. He is healthy right now. He's dropped in ADP because of the the years of just ruining people's fantasy years. Do you take that? It's like fool me once. You know, shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame won't on me. Won't be shamed. Won't be fooled won't, again. Won't be, fool won't be fooled again. But, but here's his draft price. Here's the pack that he is sandwiched in. You got Aaron Jones, Leonard Fournette's right after, and then it's Marlon Mack, Freeman, Josh Jacobs. I mean, it, you got to make your your pick of one of the if you if you have the pick. He he's a in a standard league. Leonard Fournette is more exciting to me because pure volume. And goal line opportunities. He's he's in the top five in scoring touchdowns over the last five years too, or in the last uh, three years since he came into the league. You don't generally get a guarantee in the passing game. We don't know what that offense is going to look like in that regard, and you don't generally get big plays from him since he came into the league. It's been like the lowest percentage of his runs, or of uh, you know ten plus yard runs, has been Fournette at the bottom of that list. The big plays you saw in college, you didn't see as many of them in the NFL, especially over the last few years. But nineteen touches a game. I mean, that, that's in the realm of outcomes for him yep. in a standard league. All right, we have Melvin Gordon plugged in at 18. This is kind of, I mean, this is risk mitigation placement it's for it, Melvin Gordon. 100%. Because you could have a player that belongs in the top five or you could have a player that, you know, shouldn't be drafted or touched if he doesn't come back till week nine. Yeah, it's it's hard to have an actual, like, discussion of what Melvin Gordon can do. It just comes down to this. Melvin Gordon signs a contract right now. We get a breaking news. We hit the button. Melvin Gordon, ex- full extension. Jason, where does he go? He's to my RB5. Rights? He's right after the big four. Andy, where does it go to? Five your or rights? six. He goes to five or six for me as well. So this is just this is risk mitigation. Where do you where are you willing to draft a player who could could be there week one? He might show up in week eight. We we have no idea. Are there drafts where Eckler's going to be drafted ahead of Gordon? If we get down towards the season and it doesn't look like there's headway. Or, or do you do you go Gordon yeah. Eckler fifth sixth round? Does a team do that? Yeah, I think that's more realistic than than Eckler actually going above Gordon because you won't ever get definitive word that okay I'm going to come back in week five. That's just not going to happen. That's where I see it going right now. But it's I don't have insight here. I don't I I don't I haven't talked to the team or Melvin Gordon's camp. I'm just basing this on the history of these type of negotiations. The history on the. San Diego Chargers and the Los Angeles Chargers, um, you know, and and what Gordon's camp has said, I'm saying he's going to miss a month of games. No inside information. That's just intuition. Sure. And he he was so great last year in only 12 games. He was still able to be the running back seven. And that's why we're saying if he's there, if he's good to go, then he's a top five guy. All right. We'll wrap it up with Marlon Mack and Derrick Henry at 19 and 20. Beyond that, Sony Michelle at 21, Chris Carson 20. Uh, I'll, I'll just say all these names you talk about, somebody you want to talk about. How about that? All right. That sounds Number great. 19, Marlon Mack, 20, Derrick Henry, 21, Sonny Michelle, 22, Chris Carson. You can go back to Monday's My Guys shows if you want to. I love Chris Carson. It, it feels, I'm, I'm right there I, with I, you, I love man. It, David Montgomery at 23, Kenyon Drake at 24. Look, to speak to Chris Carson, it feels so stupid that he's our 22nd ranked running back. And to me, he's my 27th ranked running back. I hate that. I don't like that. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I don't see any world where, barring injury, he finishes this low, and yet when I go and I do the stats, I can't get him much higher. But th- th- So this is just a, a PSA to the Foot Clan. Chris Carson is better than my ranking. I don't know how <laughs> to move him up because we do this stat base. Like, it, it, well, it's, it's like I said on the, my, up, on the My Guy show. I don't think that there's a, the world where he finishes where his ADP is, which is like RB23. I think he either is hurt and he's he's you know that just happens and I don't think he's injury prone but that could happen or he's going to be a very very good running back this year. Yeah. Yeah. They ran the ball 168 more times 
than their opponents in 2018. It also worked. Yeah, so, it did. Um, other players in this list, you know, David Montgomery is at 23. Yeah. He's <laughs> being drafted ahead of that at RB21. I think, the hype is going to continue. Yeah, I've tried to temper my, my stats for David Montgomery because he's a rookie and we can't guarantee that it's just he get he gets Jordan Howard's carries and he eats into Cohen's targets. That's I I be, I think that will happen, but there's there's a world where where those the opportunities does not come to fruition with with all of that work. So he's a player to watch over over the preseason. See how he gets used. Make sure you're monitoring those those beat re- reporters. We'll be talking about. Does he it move as into well. the? Does he move into first team snaps on these per- next couple weeks? Exactly. That ma- that matters a lot to me. Yeah, exactly. Because strong start to the year. If if he locks up that job, then he he will move up a lot in my rankings as well. All right. Anybody you want to touch on, Jay? Are you good? I mean, people can go check out all the rankings at the Ultimate Draft ki- on the Ultimate Draft Kit. Um, and we've got video in it, on it, around it. I mean, what I don't know the right words. We've got video breakdowns on on most all these players in there. That the, you know, if you want more info, you can look at those on the the videos page in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Yeah, and you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. All of our regular rankings for the season are up on the website as well, and an, a number of just great articles from our staff of writers putting information out there. Maybe there's a player that you want more info on. Check out the fantasyfootballers.com, no doubt. Yeah, you want to talk about late round fantasy tight ends? Lauren Carpenter just to, just put up a do not ignore these late round players. Yeah, no Check doubt. It out. Um, but otherwise, that'll, that'll do it for today. A, a quick reminder again go to YouTube tomorrow. Hang out mm. with us as we draft against Juju Smith Schuster, Ninja, Ninja um, Carl Anthony Tatman. Towns, Zach Efron, Tim the Tatman. My wife was. A little too happy about the Zach e- Zach Efron. Part. <laughs> I did see her reaction to that. Oh, you saw nothing, my man. Oh, you got a lot more at the house. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is she co-owning with him? She, yes, she's, she would. <laughs> she would, and that's the problem. All right, <laughs> that is it for today's podcast. Don't forget to check out our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A Nick Chubb jersey for seventy bucks yesterday. PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers. You don't want to miss it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And don't forget, Foot Clan support for today's show came from Manscaped, number one in men's below the belt, grooming the Lawnmower 2.0, that proprietary skin safe technology, so this trimmer will not. Nick or Snag, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job.